what is self love? What does it really mean? What does it look like to you when you know you're in? It's like a big hug around me saying that I love you just the way you are today, not who you want to be next year or in two months, not the person that needs to get into that dress or those pair of jeans, just who you are and accepting where you are right today where you are. If you don't become aware of where you are today, you won't be able to sustain whatever you really want to be. And that's, I believe that. Like I, I had to literally jump into my body and feel every part of me because I felt like I was numb. I didn't know what was going on in my brain, but whatever it was, there was no connection between my body, especially my belly. There was no connection. I, you know, I would even, even like avoid mirrors. And I remember always trying to tell my clients, you know, go look in the mirror, find the best thing that you could see. What is the most in, like, what do you love the most about seeing in the mirror? What do you see in the mirror that you love the most about yourself? And, you know, it was really hard for them to do that because they were like, I don't even see myself. And I said, yeah, that's me too. And I understand that. And, you know, I would literally talk to my clients and I would actually do the same things that I was telling them to do. And I'd sit in the mirror and I'd be like, what do you love about yourself? And then, you know, I had to literally, you know how Louise says, um, Louise Hayes, she says, she looks in the mirror and she's like, hey, how are you doing? I love you. I love you. You look beautiful today. You know, so I had to actually do that. It was so fucking uncomfortable in the beginning. But right. now I'm like, I really do love myself. Whatever it is that I have on me. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the like counter effects? Like if you don't have that self-love, you know, what are the outcomes of that? Well, you start to hate yourself. You forget that you even exist and you just don't do anything to bring you forward in your health. I mean, you know, first of all, the negative thoughts that are just constantly coming in, that alone will like do so, so much bad damage. I mean, right. so much damage to I mean, yourself. Proven that with plants, even the energy, you're actually right. negative energy. No, it's true. Yeah, plants. the negative energy. And that's a big deal for me too, because I changed that this last year was huge. Um, you know, I didn't realize how bad I was and I didn't have to say it. I was just thinking it yeah. and I would say, Oh my God, you're so fat. Oh my God. When are you going to ever lose this? You're never going to do this. And it was always like bad words coming at me, like all negative, 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 negative. And I was like, you know, especially after Sedona, when I went to Sedona, I didn't realize how severe, um, when I started working on my liver and just giving it love just to the liver. I started to let go of anger and grief. And I literally just kept sending my liver love just by thoughts alone. Right. And I noticed that that started to help me. And so I said, you know what? What if you did that with your belly? And I, I started doing that with my belly. And you know, after Sedona, I was told that, you know, I want you to hug your belly. I want you to caress it. And I'm like, oh God, how fucking uncomfortable is that, man? I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to caress it. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's it started to become an issue because even when my husband wanted to touch it, he loves touching it. And I'm like, don't touch that. And I don't feel comfortable with it. But you know, I've been trying to get better with that. And you know, again, I'm a work in progress. I'm not perfect. Hello. <laughs> it's Joe Albeck. It says fuck perfect. There you go. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Yeah. <laughs> So that. it's so funny, but it's true. And, you know, uh, I remember when I started working on the liver and, and I was letting go of like a lot of feelings, it was hard to digest those things. Literally, I felt like I was eating something that I could not digest and it was having a hard time just going through. And I have the same thing with my belly and I feel like you know, it's hard to digest those things. So if I'm having a hard time digesting those things, imagine if I'm constantly feeding myself bad, negative words about myself and trying to digest those, my digestion is going to always be off, you know, and, and it's not going to be a good thing. And in fact, there's studies, I don't have them in front of me right now, but there's studies that say that, um, if you're a negative person, you will have issues with your digestion. If you have more positive, it actually helps the vagus nerve 
to do its job fully, which is the nervous system. And, you know, that's what you kind of need. You need your body at optimal so that you could, you know, break down everything. And, you know, sometimes people are saying, oh, they have, you know, intolerances and things. I really think that those in my head, I think that intolerances are really coming or stemming from the, all those negative things. And then when we put the negative onto that, whatever it is, that carb, it becomes even more negative and then we can't digest it, of course. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Food is the, just equate it to the rejection of self. Is that what you're saying? Right. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that even with anorexia and bulimia and stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. What do you do to nurture yourself? Oh, man, my day is full, you know. I think you said something the other day, but, you know, a few people in my life think that my day is, like, just sitting around and hanging out on Facebook. And like I said, I do multitask. But my day starts out with me. I take my first, my morning, like, time is for me. It has to be, like, at least a half an hour just for me, just to relax in a quiet home. Whatever that is, you know, I haven't gotten into full meditation yet, but I am trying to at least quiet my mind in the morning and just focus on what needs to be done for today so that I can move on for the rest of the day or the weekend, whatever it is, for the yeah. plans that I have. So yeah, I like to... Self-centered, isn't it? That's very yes, it is. Thing. Yes. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. And <laughs> then, and then I go... Yeah. Please, you're adding... And what I've learned is that I need to get to the gym. And for me, that's, that's what grounds me and it brings me for the rest of the day. I'm in a good mood. I'm a great mom, a great wife. I can deal with everyday challenges, whatever comes at me. If I don't get to the gym, it's better to stay away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I need like, and I've learned now that I need it. So I, my body needs it. So even if I'm in a little pain, I get my ass there. I put my sneakers on. That's like the first thing I do. I get dressed up and actually people probably think I'm at the gym every single day. Cause that's my first thing. I put my clothes on for the gym. So even if I don't make it to the gym, I'm already dressed for the gym. So my husband's always telling me, why don't you get dressed up? Because I'm always at the gym. <laughs> so, you know, so I'm trying the weekends, I'm trying to not be at the gym. And then I take care of whatever has to be taken. It's more of like home time. So yeah. I kind of, but the weekend is set for them and for my family time. But the weekdays, every single morning, I get dressed for the gym. I come back and I start doing what's on the list that needs to be done. And I kind of prioritize it now before I just come home and I would just be like, la -di da you know, we don't have anything to do. And da -da -da. and I would just take my time. I really think ignoring what everybody else thinks is a big deal. You know, that's part of self love. Is yeah, really, I do because you just knowing that you're enough, like just know that you, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling is more than enough. You don't have to follow anybody else, you don't have to be like anyone else, just be you and just do you. I mean, really, I mean, that's a big deal. Um, and stop making fucking excuses, like Whoa. that's a big fucking deal, like. And I was just saying that this to myself this morning. And I said, you know, that's something that we have to talk about. Because I remember always blaming someone else. Yeah. Like, I would blame my husband. Oh, you know, he didn't do this and he didn't do that. And, but it has nothing to do with anybody else. It has to do with you. And then I'd blame my parents for the way I was brought up. Well, hello, you're fucking 50 years old. It has nothing to do with your parents anymore. Fucking grow up. Get it together. Just, you know, understand that, that there's no fucking excuse. Anymore. There's no excuses. If you want to be somewhere and you want to do something, you're going to do it however you can. And, you know, I have like friends that, oh, you know, I don't have the money. You know what? There's so many ways to do things these days. It has nothing to do with money anymore. You know, a lot of people, sometimes they see me overweight and they're like, oh, how is she going to be a health coach? And, you know, I have a lot of health coach friends that are overweight that won't move forward because they're worried. And it was hard for me, too, in the beginning, because it was like, you know, when you're trying to sell yourself, you're your card, right? You're your business card. So if I don't look the fucking part, 
who's going to want to hire me, right? But if I'm actually doing the part and showing them how it's done, I'm not faking anything. This is me just where I'm at today. And I'm telling you that, yeah, if you want to get them, there's some health coaches out there that fucking went and did like these shake diets. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It was good for them, but I just don't want to do that because I know I won't be able to sustain that. And I can't tell somebody else, you know what? You need to go on a shake diet so that you could lose a hundred pounds and then gain it back in like five years. Fuck exactly. that shit. I don't want that. I, and you know what? I don't want you to look skinny. I don't want you to look healthy. I want you to be fucking healthy. Oh, such I a- want you to go to your fucking doctors and, and your blood work to come back and say, hey, you're doing fucking amazing. That's what I want. I don't want to, you know, my doctors are amazed when I actually make them look at the fucking numbers. I remember how many times I would go to the doctors and they would say, oh, you know, your cholesterol is a little high. In the meantime, I've actually looked into it. Cholesterol, uh, the numbers have lowered on um, the normalcy so that they could give you more fucking drugs. So, you know, I'm not going to take that. I'm not going to take it, you know. And so I, I got their number and I learned that, you know, because I was eating a lot of nut butters at one time. And at one time I was eating so much nut butter like in a week that my cholesterol had spiked a little. So the next time I went, I didn't have any nut butter for like two weeks. <laughs> and then I had no cholesterol issue. So I was like, you know, I don't have cholesterol. So then I would go back to the doctor and I would make them look at my numbers and have them look at my last blood work. And then to be like, oh, yes, you do have a big difference. Oh, yeah, you're doing great. I was like, well, fuck yeah. And stop telling me to go and have a fucking surgery because I'm not going to do the gun surgery. <laughs> and their favorite line when they can't figure it out is, oh, well, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know? And now it's like they're all listening and they want my book and they want to pass it on to their their families. And my fucking book still didn't arrive. I'm, I can't understand what's taking so long. Like everybody in the world is getting their books except for me. <laughs> I love it. Okay, yeah, so tell me, more, tell me more about own your own shit. Well, own your own shit is like, you know, I remember waking up and being aggravated. Like, you know, the the clutter was like everywhere. And I'm not going to say that it's all me, but, you know, my husband's a, a little hoarder. But, uh, uh, and so, you know, when things don't go back where they need to go, I get very, like, frustrated. And I know a lot of women especially moms and wives or whatever, that they, you know, are tired of cleaning up after everybody. Yeah, and right. it's just like, yeah, it's, it's a fucking, it's like ridiculous. And so it's like, if we just had a spot for everything and it went back where it needed to go, we would be fine. Yeah. But then what happens is, you know, now with this Facebook and social media age, everybody's on their fucking phones, wasting like, you know, five hours a day on a phone and then like two or three hours on a TV. And right. in the meantime, all these other things could be getting done and they're not, you know? Yeah. And I started to notice that that was me. And I said, you know, why are you sitting here complaining when it's you? You're part of the fucking problem. Get up in the morning and take care of what you got to do. Take care of your shit, you know? And, and one was taking care of my health, which is top priority always now. And I'm not worried. Like if there's fucking dishes in the sink, I don't give a shit. I'm going to the gym. Why? Because I want to be alive to come back to wash those fucking dishes. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Yeah. And, and I learned along the way, not only that is balance is big deal too, because I remember you know, when you have an eating disorder or any kind of disorder, I, it might be an OCD, who knows what the fuck I have. Uh, I haven't been diagnosed yet with all those things, but you know, I haven't really looked into it. But I know I love chaos and I have a feeling it's what the way I grew up. And, you know, that's just a normal thing for me, like chaos. Let's just have chaos everywhere. <laughs> You're a manifesting generator and you create from chaos. Oh, tell me about it, man. There's like so much fucking chaos going on. You don't want me to, if I gave you the list of what I have to do today, you'd be like, what? <laughs> you know? 